Hi, this is Ms. Vital, and this podcast is meant for my AP Biology students on regulating the internal environment. One of the most remarkable characteristics of animals is that they can maintain physiologically favorable internal conditions, even as external conditions undergo dramatic shifts that would be lethal to individual cells. Homeostasis is the ability of animals to regulate their internal environment. For example, maintaining a body temperature when, external, when the external environment changes substantially. If a human's body temperature goes up or down a few degrees Celsius, they could die. The Arctic wolf can maintain body temperatures at minus 50 degrees Celsius. This unit focuses on thermoregulation, or how animals maintain an internal temperature within a tolerable range, and osmoregulation, how animals regulate solute balance and the gain and loss of water, and excretion, how animals get rid of nitrogen-containing waste products of metabolism. A regulator is an animal that uses mechanisms of homeostasis to moderate, to moderate internal changes in the face of external fluctuations. Conformers allow some conditions within their body to vary with certain external changes. They live in relatively stable environments. For example, crabs live where salinity is pretty stable. If placed in an environment of varying salinity, they will lose or gain water to adjust, and this may result in their death. Most organisms regulate in some area and conform in others. Animals with open systems that exchange energy and materials with their environment, the exchanges can be rapid and variable, and animals need to maintain constant internal environments. If we look at changes that occur during 10 years in the lifetime of a typical woman, weighing about 132 pounds or somewhere around 60 kilograms, during that 10 years, she'll eat about two tons of food. She'll drink six to 10 tons of water. She'll use two tons of oxygen. She'll metabolically generate seven million kilocalories of heat, enough to warm 90 tons of water from room temperature to boiling. The same quantity of materials and heat must be lost from the woman's body to maintain size, temperature, and chemical composition. If the woman produces two children during the 10 year span, she'll need to increase energy and material input about 5%. This is actually low because for other species, it can be from 10 to 15%. Homeostasis is a budget of gains and losses, heat budget, energy budget, water budget, etc. They're all connected. For example, terrestrial animals exchange gas by breathing and losing water by evaporation from moist lung surfaces. For every 10 degrees Celsius temperature increased, most enzyme-mediated reactions speed up two to three times until the temperature is high enough to denature the proteins. The Q10 effect is the multiple by which a metabolic reaction increases with 10 degrees Celsius in the body temperature. For example, example, glycogen hydrolysis in frogs increases 2.5 times from 20 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. This means the Q10 is 2.5. Glycogen, as you may recall, is how animals store sugar in their muscles and liver. The hydrolysis of glycogen breaks it down so it can be used for cellular respiration. There are four physical processes that account for heat gain or loss. An animal exchanges heat by four physical processes. The first one is conduction. This is the direct transfer of heat between molecules of objects in direct contact with each other. An example is when an animal sits in the cold water or on a hot rock. Water is five to 100 times more effective than air in conducting heat, which is why hypothermia happens so quickly in water. Convection is the transfer of heat by the movement of air or liquid past a surface. For example, a breeze contributes to heat loss from your skin, like the wind chill factor. 
Evaporation is the removal of heat from the surface of a liquid that is losing molecules as gas. Evaporation from an animal has a strong cooling effect, but not if the humidity of the air is close to 100%. Radiation is the emission of electromagnetic waves by all objects warmer than the absolute zero. For example, animals' bodies, the environment, and the sun. Radiation can transfer heat between objects that are not in direct contact, for example, when the sun warms an animal's body. Ectotherms have very low metabolic rates. The amount of heat generated is too low to affect body temperature. Body temperature is determined by the temperature of the surrounding environment in ectotherms. Invertebrates, fish, amphibians, and reptiles are all examples of ectotherms. Endotherms have a high metabolic rate, which generates enough heat to keep the body warmer than the environment. For example, mammals, birds, a few reptiles, and some insects do some endothermic processes. Some of the advantages of endothermy include very high levels of aerobic metabolism or cellular respiration, assisted by elaborate circulatory and respiratory systems. This enables vigorous activity for extended periods of time, for example, long distance running or powered flight. Terrestrial animals can maintain stable body temperatures during environmental temperature fluctuations that are more severe than the aquatic environment. For example, endotherms can function at freezing temperatures, ectotherms can't. Endothermy also provides mechanisms for cooling down in high temperatures. Therefore, endotherms can withstand high temperatures. Some disadvantages is endothermy is energy expensive, especially in low temperatures. For example, at 20 degrees Celsius, the human resting metabolic rate is 13,000 to 18,000 calories per day. In alligators, it's 60 calories per day. Therefore, endotherms need to consume a lot more food than ectotherms. There are four categories for adjusting thermoregulation. In other words, heat gain equals heat lost. Adjusting the rate of heat exchange between the animal and its environment would be accomplished by insulation, such as fur, feathers, fat. The insulation reduces heat flow between the animal and the environment. It also regulates blood flow between the body core and the skin. Vasodilation is an increase in the diameter of blood vessels near the body surface. This warms the skin, releasing heat when the animal gets hot. Vasoconstriction reduces the diameter of blood vessels near the skin, which cools the skin and conserves heat. It's interesting that when your body gets cold, it initially vasodilates to bring warm blood to your skin. But if you continue to stay cold and your body core temperature drops, it'll vasoconstrict the vessels near your skin, moving the warm blood back towards your core to really sacrifice your extremities but preserve your vital organs. Countercurrent heat exchange traps heat in the body core, reducing heat loss. For example, marine mammals and birds lose heat from extremities to water. Arteries carrying warm blood are close to the veins the heat is transferred to the veins. As veins move towards the core, they pass warmer and warmer arteries, and eventually at the core, the venous blood is as warm as the arterial blood. Cooling by evaporative heat loss is another way that animals thermoregulate. Terrestrial animals lose water by evaporation on the skin and when they breathe. Water absorbs a lot of heat when it evaporates. For example, panting increases evaporation and sweating increases evaporation. Animals also thermoregulate using behavioral responses. Endo and ectotherms change posture or move around to control body temperature. Some examples are basking, hibernation, and migration. And the last way that animals thermoregulate is changing the rate of metabolic heat production. Endotherms can increase metabolic heat production when exposed to cold for example, shivering and moving muscles. The thermoregulation of animal groups um, is broken down first into mammals and birds. 
they maintain their body temperature within a narrow range. Birds are about 39 to 42 degrees Celsius, which is about 102 to 107 Fahrenheit. They usually are warmer than their environments. Mammals are 36 to 38 degrees Celsius, which is about 97 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Heat flows from warmer to cooler areas, so birds and mammals need to counteract heat loss. Endotherms produce large amounts of metabolic heat that replace heat loss to the environment. They can also vary heat production to match varying rates of heat loss. Heat production can be increased by shivering or moving around. Non-shivering thermogenesis, or NST, in some mammals, hormones can cause the mitochondria to produce heat instead of ATP. This takes place throughout the body. Brown fat is when a tissue in some mammals is found in the neck and between the shoulders. It's different than white fat, and it's specialized for rapid heat production. These two methods can increase heat production in cold environments five to 10 times. Insulation, like hair, feathers, and fat layers, reduce the flow of heat. They lower the energy cost of keeping warm. Raising of fur and feathers increases the layer of trapped air, increasing insulation. Goosebumps are actually the vestigial um, structures of raising the hair. Vasodilation and vasoconstriction also regulate heat. They contribute to regional temperature differences within animals. Hair loses insulation power when it's wet. Seals have a thick layer of fat or blubber to compensate. The loss of heat to water occurs 50 to 100 times more rapidly than to air, but blubber protects body core temperatures. Countercurrent heat exchange protects flippers and tails. Birds and mammals have to eat a lot to accomplish these feats of thermoregulation. If birds and mammals live in areas where it is warm, they need to cool their bodies. When whales go to warm water to reproduce, vasodilation releases heat. In hot climates, vigorous exercise adds metabolic heat to the body. The body temperature may be allowed to rise. This enhances heat loss by increasing the temperature gradient between the body and the environment. Evaporative cooling dissipates body heat, Panting releases heat in birds and some mammals. Some birds have special pouches with lots of blood vessels in the floor of their mouth. Fluttering of the pouches increases evaporation. Sweat glands in some mammals, which are controlled by nerves, increase evaporative cooling. Some bats spread saliva and urine on their skin to increase evaporation.